Is everyone absentee here? Continuing Penumbra, and um, yeah, I'm at. This is one of the safe spots, and um, I had to look things up to see what I did wrong in the last one and why I was flailing around. And. I didn't seem to notice it, I think. I'm not sure, but I noticed there was bolt cutters here. Ah. <sighs> Which, I was messing with these chains constantly throughout the whole thing, and I could have just clipped them. Like that. Then push this. Just let it fall. Like that. Okay, I don't need whispering. Okay. I am through. It looks like a baby of what just attacked me here. It's an extract from a newspaper. KNR, Thursday, 1st, Jan January 1974. Increased sea traffic causes local concern. Inhabitants of a small village in the relatively desolate northwest have been reporting witness... Reporting witness... Okay, have been reporting witnessing uncharacter... Uncharacteristic... Uncharacteristically, I can't speak today. Large volumes of seaborne traffic over the past few months... Six months. Northwest Greenland is virtually uninhabited by modern standards, containing just 0.1 persons per square kilometer, one-third of the national average. Sea trade has dropped off dramatically since the closure of the Northwestern lead and iron mines in March 1972. The mine itself ceased operation due to massive structural failure following an apparently accidental detonation of standard mining explosives, where all 47 workers were assumed killed in the blast bodies were not recovered. Now locals are complaining of noise pollution caused by a high and steady volume of ships sailing close to shore. Unfortunately, in order for any form of official inquiry to be undertaken, the registration codes of the ships in question must be recorded and since villagers claim the ships only travel under cover of darkness, this may mark a difficulty for their ongoing quest for justice. Eric Nunyat. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of different clippings here. Biomedical science, local wildlife, or field studies. In this. Looks to be a smaller species of that worm thing I saw earlier, or just a juvenile. It's been dissected. The internal organs removed. It couldn't be much older than that wall I demolished. I can't use this as a weapon. Okay. Okay, what's this? What is that? It's badly faded, but it looks like a close-up view of some species of annelid. Uh, a worm? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna save. A cohort. A man with no name. It is he who opens this gateway to hell. A grin on his face. He is terrible indeed. He watches the men writhe and turn. Still farther looks on. Father looks on. Something vital in his hand. There, it's me. I'm inside that box, and outside it. I don't... I can't get things straight in my head. <sighs> Man, this is gonna suck when I meet this thing. Images and notes related to the gray rockworm. This thing is big for an invertebrate. Not good. 60s microscope. Functional for research purposes, but we've come a long way since these were common. Okay. Okay, I don't need whispers. Ooh. Very little is still readable. Okay, so this must be used for... something? Hmm. I guess I have to either light a fire with it. Ooh. 
Nothing in there. Crap. Interesting. Stacks of books are a mixture of industrial reference material and scientific journals. Okay. Anything here? There's a mess of statistics and crew drawings on this chalkboard. They all relate to large species of annelid. Okay, basically this whole room is telling us there's a worm. Okay. Locked from the other side, but I think the key's still in the lock. Is it? I see it. So, how do I grab it? Pry it? Poking the key out isn't going to achieve anything. I need a way to collect it from under the door once I... Oh! There we go. There we go. Magic. Whoa, what's in here? Okay, okay, okay. Um, while you hunt for those delicate, uh, melt-in-your-mouth mousy morsels, there are places you should not go for, for fear of death. The Reaper lives here, just like you and I. And just like you and I, he must ingest the living flesh of those less fortunate than you. Uh -huh. There is a small place that I do not want you to visit, even on your holidays, because it is dark and evil place that I've been. When the darkness has overwhelmed my small decaying mind, some bad things have flowed from my mind and through my pen, but the brilliant blue ink itself seemed to turn to blood into my grace. And by the way, should you turn peckish, red is at its finest sautéed with a little engine oil. Uh-huh. I don't know what that little thing is. I'm gonna break him anyway. So much death and disease down here. I suppose slugs were an inevitability. Oogly. Oh, that's some big ones in there. What are these jars of, actually? I should actually probably look. All these cabinets are damaged. Something violent went on in here. Yeah, I can tell. Whatever happened in here, someone must have been in a great deal of pain. It's an artificial habitat. Those things look long dead. I think I know how they felt not being able to get out. Ugh. What's this? Professor. These are the biomedical journals of Dr. J. Peters, MSc, PhD, Com completed between the dates of 30th of March 1969 and 1st of January 1972 at the Northwestern Research Station within the Northwestern Iron Mine, with the permission of Delta Mining Corp. Replication of selected art extracts left at the disposal of mine foreman. Subject of study, genus Ryacophilia. Cophila. Gray walk, rockworm. Aim to investigate the abnormal presence of the ca Cadis in the Greenland rock. Collection of samples, if, if indeed they can be identified correctly. Standard series of testing, observation, dissection. Personal notes. Upon arrival at the mining facility, I was immediately stunned by the sheer volume of fauna that finds a way of life down here, despite the conditions. In general, one would assume that species whose natural habitat is past a certain depth would find the intrusion of human activity too great a threat to remain in place. However, almost the exact opposite seems to be in the case in this instance. It is curious that certain areas of the mine appear to be entirely without life of any kind, and yet another, other deeper areas are teeming. And were the situation permitting, I would embrace the opportunity to commit further time to the study of these organisms. However, the purpose of my stay here shall continue to be the genus Ryakophila. Ah, finally, some writing paper. Look at me, just using up the pages to scroll down whatever comes to my head. Ha! What is this stuff, anyway? Some kind of research paper? No matter, it's paper all the same. I can finally record what's been happening down here for, I suppose, about a year now. It must be near the end of 2001 by now. Huh, I wonder when Christmas was. No matter, too tired to write now. We'll rest a little first. Interesting. 
Samples collected. The, co the collection process has been far easier than I anticipated. The setup of the artificial environment for the rockworm went without a hitch, and the specimens themselves are so abundant as to make keeping them out far more challenging than containing them. They are all of healthy size, perhaps even beyond recorded size, and I can only assume that this is due to some lack of natural predators down here. Specimens are as follows. Three adults in artificial habitat, two larval infants dead. Me. I've been down here two days now, was meaning to record events every day, but was too busy securing the area. I've used some supplies from the old mining system to wall myself in here. It seems as safe a place as any, so those things could at least stay put for a while. To that end, seems I had a pretty lucky stumbling here. All this old research is about something similar to what's been hunting me ever since I escaped the shelter four days ago. Don't get me wrong, after that, after what they did to me back there, I'd rather be facing anything else, and after almost a year of fighting for our lives, we didn't really stand a chance anyway. I don't know how many are left inside. But this is good. These notes might have some way to fight the things. The rockworms have followed me here. I don't know how they knew I was coming or how they managed to follow me in the dark, but maybe I can work that out now. I found some old new newspaper clippings. I guess they're referring to this mine. I had no idea it was so old, so big. I can now see now why they built that facility here in the first place. A lot of history buried down here. It worries me though. We've been resting all our hopes on rescue on one of the scientists who escaped right near the start of it all. He got out almost as the chaos began, so we figured he might have made it out and brought help, but maybe me and him are due the same fate. I must record what's been going on. Give the word the world the answers it needs so it doesn't fall prey to what's been released down here. But first I need to worry about myself, find a way out of here, and work out how to kill these worm things. <sighs> Observations. The creatures are indeed larger than was previously been recorded. The juveniles seem to still be growing far beyond their natural limits. Although the adults have now expired, I will watch with interest to see what the lifespan of this particular subspecies. The worms appear to have three senses. I was, would be validated by previous research. Taste, smell, and an extremely sensitive sense of touch which allows them to detect vibrations in the rock in the same way that the human eye senses beams of light and processes them into spatial images. Their natural prey is insects smaller than themselves, and heaven help those insects, because the worm is a vicious and efficient killer. Me, he's wrong. They have no sense of smell. Today I attempted to distract them with a the concoction I found lying around, but to no avail. However, it does seem that they detect movement via vibrations, which would explain how they can see in the dark. Damn, there's almost no way to escape them down here. I'm on their territory now. Lifespan is three days and counting. I can still hear them outside the wall. As an extra precaution, I've locked myself in the smaller study area connected to the main lab room. If they get through that wall, I doubt this door will stop them, but it's better than nothing. Barely. Professor. Conclusions. This subspecies of genus Ryacophila is highly adapted for its environment. If released above the surface, it seems that likely that it would quickly destroy the existing rockworm population, and soon after that, the population would grow to a size far outstripping its own food supplies. Given its increase in size and lifespan already due to unknown conditions, I would hypothesize that the worm, if left in such conditions for a reasonable period of time, perhaps three to four thousand years, would grow up to a further three inches, making it a total of almost one foot long. However, should those conditions change, or indeed magnify, physical evolution could occur far more rapidly. Me. It's the fifth day today, and I swear they have begun to surround my location. I can't tell whether or not they have breached the wall I built, but I'm certain they've entered whatever area surrounds this room. The future looks increasing, increasingly bleak. I intend to record here the events of the past year in the hope that perhaps what occurred could be contained or driven away. Now I realize I could write all I wanted. No one will ever make it down here to read it. So why write this now? Good question. I have no answer. All I do know is I'd rather take my own life than die at those jaws of those hideous monsters. Monsters. I have tied a noose. Those monsters may feed on my course, but they won't take my life. That's an interesting bit of information. Okay, so it's all this research on these frickin' worms. And I have a feeling... A very bad feeling. My one way out is through there. From the debris, I'd say something huge broke into the room not too long ago. There's blood and slime everywhere. I almost don't want to go in there. Is there anything in this cabinet I may need? I hope. No.
Hmm, sparks. Okay, um... What's the next step? Whoa! There's writing scrawled everywhere. Must be an ultraviolet ink. Definitely the product of a deranged mind. But whose? No time. Holy crap. What does it say? Left the blood is deep, head is crying, lonely. Dark, they left the blood. Okay, I can't go through there anyway. Oh man, that is rather creepy. Is there anything else in here that maybe was revealed by that? Alone? I can't- wow, I can't, really can't read that. That is insane scrawling. Is there anything important? Okay, nothing important in there. <laughs> Can I pick anything up? I feel like there should be something that I'm missing here. Wow. Is there, is there another one of those switches around here? Maybe that might mean that there's something else written on these. I don't know. Rather creepy. Okay. Okay, so... Um... I guess I'm done here? I think, yeah, I think I am. Darkness eats... I still need a code, though. That's the one thing I still need. I need a code for that door. That is very creepy. Okay. That's what I need. I still need... <clears throat> There. Thank you. Okay. So, now I just need to get code for the door. Which I think I know where that is. I think I killed the one over here, so I think I'm fine. Yeah, I killed the one over here. Okay. So now I just need to take a look here. Come on. Okay, now. around here. Don't know about that weird stuff. Let's see. Oh. I can maybe cut this? Ah, oh, damn it. Not quite right. It's a chain. Okay. I guess. Or those tunnels. I know what that means. I better not stick around here too long. I don't like going in here. Fuck you. I hear those damn spiders. Whoa! Oh, son of a bitch. Why? Why is this place trying to kill me? Yeah, let's... I am with you, my friend. Stop crumbling, stop crumbling, I don't... Where is it? Oh. I 
Oh shit, there's more. Um. Fuck you. Shit. Die, damn it. There we go. Whew. Holy crap, they hurt. Don't have much more of those things. Oh, that slopping noise. What is that? Screw you. Okay, where's it gonna start me at? Okay. Something I can work with, I think. Um, let's try something with more power behind it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go this way. It's... Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, go this way. There has to be something. Oh, this stuff. This is great. Yeah, perfect. Very nice. Whoa! Hey, spiders. There we go. Okay, I'm loving this mining pick. This is nice. Oh, fuck you. Dang. Okay, mining pick is my freaking friend here. Okay, I gotta explore. I gotta find... There has to be something in here. Okay, there's a block. Just did a nice little circle. Okay, that way didn't show me anything. You nasty. Okay. Hear these fuckers. Damn it. Okay. I know there's more around here, so I gotta run. I think this is the only way so far. I'm safe. Okay, they're following me. I'm here! Yes, yes, yes! Shit. There's a way, um... Lock it up, lock it up. That's not gonna help me. There we go. I'm gonna hold on to that and wait because there's things that are gonna kill me. Don't nope, screw you. Ugh. Ow, they hurt. Damn. There has to be a way out. Damn it. Good. There's probably more on the way. There is, there is, there's something in there. Unless my friends lie somewhere near you now. A friend indeed, a friend indeed. 
about a friend that's dead. It's a poor conversationalist. Poor conversationalist. Ruptured and decomposing abuses. Huh, wow. Okay, there has to be something I'm missing. Oh, what's this? Okay, good. Anything important, anything I can use. Get out of my freaking way. Okay, just jerky. I can't find, I gotta find a way out though. Here we go. There we go, okay. Anything important? Sweet, sweet. Batteries, batteries. Flares, flares. Get back up here, so. So that those things can't follow. Come on, we can do it. There we go. Okay. Okay, yeah, I cannot fight worth a damn. <laughs> that was probably frustrating to all of you too. <laughs> but okay. Okay, there was a note I just got. I wrote this note in the knowledge that it may as well serve as my last will and testament. Myself and three other miners have been trapped beneath the main shaft to the surface for what we believe to be three days, but with no daylight and increasing dehydration. It's impossible to tell. The only thing keeping us alive is the hope that there could be a rescue team already on the way. We were all so positive at the start, but that seems long ago now. Renton was the first to crack sometime during the first night. We all just lay there, trying to sleep through the sound of his wailing and sobbing, trying to pretend his problems weren't our own, that he was weak for having given up so soon. The fact was, he was dealing with the situation pretty realistically. Our chance of survival gets smaller every hour. Since then, he hasn't said much, but the despair that gripped him seems to have spread through the rest of us like a cancer. We were such fool fools to ignore the foreman, and he paid for that with his life. When he started putting security code locks on all the doors, we thought he was crazy. There's only us down here after all, so why should we need codes to access places we were all allowed to go? He gave us all code sheets, made us swear to keep them safe. Huh, mine hasn't left my locker more than once. It's still there. Doesn't get much safer than that. We asked him who we were keeping who we were keeping them safe from, but he never said. It was a pain in the arse, but what it was is, is what I was. I had to trek all the way to that crazy biologist's office in the mining room this morning just to check the code for Section C. Biologist's office in the mining room? Just to check the code for Section C. Wait, what? But he obviously knew something about those, these mines we didn't. Some of the guys started acting weird. Not crazy weird, just not normal. That didn't stop a couple of them being carted off to mainland Europe for psychiatric help. It was no one I knew well. Until the incident three days ago. We were in a chemical storage, when one of the guys who had seemed pretty straight just started shouting. It wasn't a normal kind of shouting. Not any kind of wordsmith, so I just don't know how to describe the noises he was making. We'll just have to stick with n not normal. Anyway, he managed to hurt a couple of guys, damaged some equipment before we got him under control. Nothing serious. We released him, he seemed okay. Phased, but alright. Didn't really know where he was, far away look in his eyes. That look. I'll remember that for the rest of my days, even if there aren't many more of them. His pupils weren't dilated, they just seemed to take up more space than should be possible. Black and horrible. Then he snapped and grabbed up one of the high-rated explosive packs. We knew what he intended, saw it in those eyes. Those that could made a run for it, but the guy was already bearing down on the foreman. He didn't have a chance. There were five of us who made it out to the exit shaft. Only four survived the explosion. The elevator shaft collapsed in on us, and now it's anyone's guess how many are still trapped down here. The last thing I saw was those eyes. It seemed like they were staring at me, and me alone. Miles Statton. Okay, so I have this, but it says in the biologist's office, which would be over in the, um, the place where I saw the UV light. So did I miss it there? 
I don't know. But I'm going to go there in the next episode, because this one's kind of running long. I know I kind of spoke a lot, and there was a lot of things to read in this episode. So, next time I'll be going on over there, and we still got to find where Section C is. But, how? Oh, I know. This, this blank page. It has to be the UV light. I have to read this in the UV light. That's where I'm going. That's my goal for next time. Okay, so, see you guys next time. <laughs>